For some reason, it feels like people think that grass type Pokemon aren't actually very good. On the one hand, I do kind of get it because grass type Pokemon have a ton of weaknesses and they also used to be a lot worse than they are now since they've gotten a lot of buffs over the years. But no matter the reason, I feel like people just really underestimate grass type Pokemon and are always surprised to see them doing well. This is really funny to me as a competitive player because grass type Pokemon are actually so good right now that almost every team that does well has at least one grass type on it. I myself just won a tournament using two different grass type Pokemon. Anyway, all of this is to say that there are actually a number of really good grass type Pokemon. And today we're going to be talking about some of the best. Before we talk about the three best grass type Pokemon of all time, let's talk about five of the best grass type Pokemon that are just barely short of the pinnacle. Starting with Venusaur. Okay, let's be honest. I mean, nobody clicked on this video and thought we weren't going to talk about Venusaur, right? Venusaur has been good pretty much since I started playing competitive Pokemon, which let's be honest this is a long time ago at this point so it definitely deserves a spot on this list now there are technically three different venusaurs there's vanilla venusaur which we all know and love there's mega venusaur and then there is gigantamax venusaur each of the different venusaurs was good at different times but i'm not going to talk about each one individually because that would be completely uh completely ridiculous Let's talk about them all together. I think it actually makes sense to start with Mega Venusaur because that was the first time where Venusaur really entered competitive Pokemon as a main threat. To understand what makes Mega Venusaur so good, we should probably talk about some things that are going to be true for all of the grass types on our list. Most notably, the fact that they have a large number of weaknesses. Grass type Pokemon are weak to five different types, which is a lot. And I think it's part of the reason why people tend to think of grass type Pokemon as being really weak. That being said, they have a number of useful resistances, most notably to ground, water, and electric attacks, all of which are really hard to resist. A lot of the best grass type Pokemon have a way of mitigating the high number of weaknesses, whether with the secondary type, uh, an ability, or something else. In Mega Venusaur's case, it's the ability. It gets the ability Thick Fat, which has the power of fire and ice type attacks. Combining this ability with the secondary poison typing, and you'll find that Mega Venusaur actually only has two true weaknesses, two flying and psychic. Add on to this the fact that Mega Evolution gives you a ton of bonus stats, and in Mega Venusaur's case, that's mostly applied to its defenses and special attack stat, and you end up with a bulk grass type Pokemon that's really hard to remove while still being able to output respectable damage. When X and Y first released and Mega Evolution was added to the game, the first two years of those formats, 2014 and 2015, Mega Venusaur actually saw a fair bit of play. I myself used it to win a regional alongside Mega Banette, which uh, just to be clear, was not a good Pokemon by any means. And I'm going to say it wasn't even an okay Pokemon by any means. It was one of those things where after I won, people were like, huh? 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 And then nobody ever looked at Mega Banette again, which was probably for the best and the correct decision. Anyway, Mega Venusaur was really good because it was able to function as this kind of like end game boss Pokemon, where if you got rid of the flying and the psychic types, you could sometimes just put it in a position where the opponent just couldn't get rid of it. Being a grass type gives it access to a lot of really annoying attacks. And we'll touch on some of those more later, but here what I'm talking about is moves like Leech Seed and Synthesis, and to a lesser extent, even Giga Drain, which could help keep its health really high and just make it impossible to get off the field. It also gives access to the move Sleep powder which is one of my personal least favorite moves of all time and we're going to talk about sleep powder a little bit more later when we talk about regular venusaur but mega venusaur was able to use it as well i guess that makes sense since they're both the same pokemon yeah good one wolf yeah wow that's the analysis you came here for right folks yeah let's go wolf great analysis anyway sleep powder is normally used on fast and frail pokemon to knock a threat out of commission before they can attack and then trying to knock it out with you know a double up from the partner later or something or another powerful attack but mega venusaur was able to use it in a different way because of its bulk normally with sleep powder you kind of get one chance and if you miss uh, you might have a bad time but with mega venusaur it was so tanky that you could afford to miss once sometimes even twice and hitting all your sleep powders could have a really big effect on the battle mega venusaur won multiple regional championships and at least one national championship in the first two years of x and y and even though it didn't see a ton of play after 2015 uh let's just say the other venusaur forms would help to pick up the slack so let's talk about base Venusaur. Despite also being, well, Venusaur, uh, base Venusaur actually plays extremely different than Mega Venusaur. While Mega Venusaur is super slow and tanky and tries to kind of put itself in a situation where it can't be gotten rid of, regular Venusaur is fast and frail and really annoying. Its main use has to do with its ability, Chlorophyll. This doubles its speed stat in the sun, which makes it a fast and frail Pokemon that is really disruptive, again with Sleep Powder, although this time with more of a focus on offense, thanks to its good coverage moves like uh, earth power and weather ball on top of the grass moves like leaf storm or 
frenzy plant or giga drain uh, and sludge bomb it would almost always hold the focus sash uh when it's base form which would give you some insurance in case sleep putter missed though because it was so frail this was always a risk as well venusaur also saw some play in the first couple years of x and y because you could only mega evolve one pokemon on your team and pairing venusaur's chlorophyll ability with mega charizard wise drought ability was a really dangerous combination non-mega venusaur actually won australian nationals back in 2014. of course most venusaur in those early years were mega venusaur because um you could just bring charizard and venusaur together and mega evolve whichever one was better or you know you just mega evolve charizard and then give up on venusaur's item it wasn't that big of a deal Venusaur really started seeing success during Sun and Moon, where it can be used alongside one of the strongest restricted Pokemon, Groudon. Certain formats allow for super powerful legendary Pokemon called restricted Pokemon, and you only get one or two of them on your team, depending on the rule set. Venusaur was really nice because you could pair it with Groudon, obviously, to help set up the Sun and double its speed stat, and Groudon and Venusaur both paired well with Xerneas. Xerneas was the ultimate setup sweeper, and so being able to use Sleep Powder to knock your opponent's restricted Pokemon out of commission for a couple turns while you either hit them with Groudon or set up with Xerneas could be really threatening. Now, it did take these restricted Pokemon for regular Venusaur to feel worth using. It basically saw zero usage during 2018, which was the other year it would have been legal, but it had a lot of usage actually in, in 2019 with these powerful restricted Pokemon. It won multiple events, actually some of them back to back to back, and it was just a dominant threat in the metagame that you had to respect or else risk your entire team falling asleep. And yet neither Mega Venusaur or Base Venusaur reached the heights that Gigantamax Venusaur hit. Gigantamax Venusaur is more similar to Base Venusaur than uh, Mega Venusaur, in part because it's just like a big version of regular Venusaur, but there is something that is very, very different between the two. Gigantamax Venusaur gets access to a signature max move called G Max Vine Lash. This move was just completely nuts. Like, just to be honest, it was completely unbalanced. There were four max moves that had this effect it was Colossal and then the three Kanto starters, and yeah just like not balanced at all uh, i pretty much won the players cup two just off the strength of gigantamax colossal and gigantamax charizard and gigantamax venusaur were two other pokemon that had the same effect that were just they were just completely unbalanced like i'll just be completely honest they were just stupid for anyone who doesn't know number one you're very lucky number two here's what the effect did if you hit a pokemon even through protect with a gigantamax vine lash or any other equivalent your entire team would lose one sixth of their health every turn for the next four turns if you get the maximum value out of this, I think it comes out to like a third of a team's total HP as a passive effect of landing a single move. Now remember, base Venusaur was already really good in the sun as just like a disruptive Pokemon that could sometimes do a lot of damage, but when you added on this capability, it became a complete menace. Thanks to Dynamax doubling its HP, you also weren't forced to run Focus Sash in the way that you were with base Venusaur, so you could do stuff like Life Orb to boost your damage or weakness policy uh which could be very scary if you let it get set up because uh yeah i probably don't need to explain that to you now events were canceled thanks to the pandemic during 2020 and 2021 so we didn't really get to see what venusaur would have done uh if there had been like a ton of events but the limited online events that we did have were well there was a lot of venusaur let's just say there were four online events that served as kind of replacement to uh real life events during the pandemic called the players cup one two three and four and venusaur wasn't legal for the first one but in the other three it placed first second and i think fourth so yeah that should give you an idea of how strong it was now for all these tournaments there wasn't like Groudon or another I don't know very powerful Sunsetter so it had to be used with Torkoal who is just um let's just say that Torkoal is a bit weaker than Groudon during 2022 during the final year of Sword and Shield's life cycle uh Groudon was added back in alongside the other restricted Pokemon as we played a restricted format for this final year Gigantamax Venusaur was uh probably as expected very very good it won multiple regional championships and one of the three internationals that took place I've said a lot about Venusaur so I'll try to wrap this up here but but yeah basically the only reason that Venusaur isn't higher on our list is because uh it's inherently very inconsistent a lot of the success of Venusaur revolves around sleep powder which is only 75 percent accurate and so while players have had success with it it's really hard to kind of scrape that top level with Venusaur because it's just such an inherently risky move to use that being said it's still undoubtedly one of the best grass type Pokemon of all time so it definitely belongs on our list okay next up is a Pokemon who's actually already been on the best water types of all time list Ludicolo I talked a fair bit about Ludicolo in the best water type Pokemon video um and so I don't really want to talk too much about it here just because I mean I've already been yapping quite a bit about Venusaur so maybe we'll compensate by cutting Ludicolo a little short but basically it's a really good Pokemon its main niche is the fact that it's super good against rain teams and I guess just weather teams in general especially in a restricted format by being both water and grass type it's got a quadruple weakness to uh water moves which is really really valuable in a format with Kyogre and it also resists grass as well without being weak to fire Ludicolo has been used a lot over the years both as a rain sweeper and as a counter to rain based teams even in formats where there isn't Kyogre it's still really good as a Pokemon that can abuse you know rain uh and also as a Pokemon that you can slap on if your team has a weakness to rain because it's just 
so good against water type moves. It also has some utility because it's able to use fake out to disrupt opponents and um, it used to have scald. Rest in peace scald, you are very missed. I miss scald a lot. I actually feel really bad for water types, but not you, Ogre Pond. I don't feel bad for you. Anyway, it's a bulky Pokemon. It can support its team. It works as a sweeper. It works as a tank. Uh, it's just overall a really interesting Pokemon. It's not higher up on our list because its stats are uh, a little bit lacking to say the least it's had a really good role over the course of history and i think it's a really cool pokemon and i think it, it works really well as a grass type so yeah definitely deserves a spot on this list okay new pokemon time let's talk about whimsicott whimsicott is similar to ludicolo in that its stats um are not very good uh but it has other things that it can do and I, I definitely think that it's one of the best grass type pokemon of all time whimsicott's main role is as a tailwind setter it has the prankster ability which gives priority to all of its moves that don't do any damage and tailwind is one of the best supporting moves in the game doubling its team speed stat and when you're able to use that with priority it becomes very dangerous because you get the benefit right away prankster tailwind is really valuable because changes to speed happen immediately so being able to set tailwind up before either of your opponent's pokemon attacks almost always is going to result in your partner pokemon moving before either of their partner Pokemon, which can be really valuable, especially if you have some like middling speed, powerful attacker against a faster and frailer Pokemon. Whimsicott is cool typing, being grass and fairy type as well, and that comes with a lot of benefits too. Moonblast is a really solid attack since it has a really high base power, and that helps to compensate a little bit for Whimsicott's um, lack of offensive stat. I actually looked this up recently because I was like, yeah, what's, what's Whimsicott's base special attack stat? It's like slow right it's probably like 90. it's 77. yeah it's uh really 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 low for reference that's lower than pokemon like uh dolive and Quilava and monferno so that should tell you pretty much everything you need to know whimsicott's other stats aren't super great but it does have a really high base speed stat which is really useful on a tailwind pokemon most notably is faster than pokemon like thunderous and tornadus so it can use tailwind before they can taunt it which is a really big deal. Big tears can help to weaken the opponent and set up for a powerful double attack. Helping hand can do something similar and is useful in both physical and special attacking partners. Uh, Charm can be used to actually really weaken a physical attacking opponent. Tickle does something similar, uh, makes them a little bit less weak than Charm would, but also lowers their defense stat to kind of combo with a physical attacking partner. I've actually played against Worry Seed Whimsicott in a tournament where it used Worry Seed to overwrite its own Regigigas' slow start, which was cool. And you can also use that to wake your partners up if they fall asleep against like Venusaur or other sleep related Pokemon. So it has a really deep supporting move pool as well. Whimsicott saw a fair bit of usage back in 2015 when it was paired with Mega Gengar. With Mega Gengar Shadow Tag trapping the opponents in, uh, you could do something really mean and use Encore with Prankster Whimsicott to force the target to use the same move again, and then disable with Mega Gengar to prevent them from using that move that you just told them they had to use and basically this forces the target to struggle whimsicott's fake tears also paired really well with mega gengar's high special attack and high speed stats making it a really dangerous duo just like venusaur and ludicolo whimsicott is also good in restricted formats thanks to prankster tailwind but also thanks to its other supporting moves as well multiple whimsicott top cut the world championship back in 2016 and other whimsicott won regionals in that format as well the following year whimsicott actually won the world championships using a really cool and creative z nature power set which let it use both z electric and z fairy because it had both partner tapus on the field and the z move would transform based on what the terrain was whimsicott did have a little bit of success for the rest of sun and moon though it wasn't uh especially mainstream but when sword and shield came around it quickly became one of the best pokemon in the game aaron trailer used whimsicott to win the first tournament of sword and shield where it would also play second third and fifth and it went on to dominate all of the tournaments up until the pandemic sent everybody home in 2022 when tournaments returned whimsicott was once again a standout pick aaron trailer funnily enough got second at the first tournament following the pandemic once again with whimsicott and he made a really cool play where he used dynamax whimsicott to prevent the opponent's amoongus from putting his team to sleep which i just think is cool so i wanted to mention unfortunately uh whimsicott really hasn't been used at all in scarlet and violet mostly because it wasn't in the game until recently but uh even now that it is in the game nobody really wants to use whimsicott because tornadus is also a prankster tailwind setter and they gave it bleak wind storm which is some stupid move that is just like incredibly powerful and so it's really hard to justify using whimsicott over tornadus when they both have prankster tailwind but tornadus is just a lot more threatening and bleak wind storm is just a really broken move although a really frustrating move as well anyway i think it's clear that whimsicott is still clearly one of the best grass type pokemon of all time and even though it's not very good right now i think that that could absolutely change in the future especially if tornadus isn't around okay our next pokemon on the list uh actually is not in scarlet and violet and i think out of everything that we're going to talk about today it's one of very few pokemon that didn't make it into the current games 
It's a personal favorite Pokemon of mine, Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn is really cool because despite being a grass type and having a ton of weaknesses, as a steel secondary type, it's incredibly tanky. Ferrothorn plays most similarly to Mega Venusaur, serving as kind of this like really annoying tank that's difficult to take down since its steel secondary typing gives it a ton of resistances. It's primarily used as a leech seed Pokemon that you try to kind of set up for an end game with where the opponent doesn't have anything that they can do to get rid of your Ferrothorn, though it has seen some offensive uses as well. It's really slow, which actually combos quite nicely with its move Gyro Ball, which does more damage the faster the target is. This is really useful against fast fairy type Pokemon like Xerneas most notably, but it's also useful against faster and frail Pokemon in general like Tapu Koko and Mega Gengar. Ferrothorn has been good pretty much since it was introduced. Um, I actually used it to get second in a regional all the way back in 2012, uh, which was a long time ago for anyone who can do uh, math, but it feels like it's a Pokemon that's like never really been bad. It's not always like a top threat or anything, but it, it makes use of each generation's mechanics a little bit differently, and it always feels like a Pokemon that you have to respect or you risk losing to. Ferrothorn is also funny because it feels like it has similar usage in and out of restricted formats, but it plays very differently in a restricted format than in a regular format. In a non-restricted format, it's often there as like this kind of like super tank Pokemon that you want to bring to the end game once you've gotten rid of the fire and fighting type Pokemon, which I think are its only two weaknesses actually. And if they don't have super effective moves, and if you set up Leech Seed properly, and you have leftovers and protect, they just can't get rid of it and you eventually win the war of attrition in a restricted format it actually makes use of its bulk as a switch in partially but also um uh, of its typing offensively where a lot of the key pokemon are often weak to ferrothorn's types groudon kyogre and xerneas are all weak to one of its stab moves and pokemon like mega rayquaza actually can take a fair bit from gyro ball especially if they've dropped their defenses uh after a dragon assault dragon ascent what is that move called i should know this i definitely used it to win the world championships dragon ascent I'm locking in that as my final answer. I don't know. I'm not going to look it up. I don't know if that's true. I can ascend. Anyway, Ferrothorn feels like a Pokemon where it's kind of like always good. It's super reliable. It's really tanky. It actually hits pretty hard. And in Sword and Shield, actually, during the online era, it actually saw a decent amount of play as an Assault Vest Pokemon, where it actually worked really well as a Dynamax Pokemon. Max Steel Spike could be used to boost its defenses. Max Overgrowth kind of got around the low accuracy of Power Whip uh, as, a, as, as a thing. And it can sometimes run even ground moves uh, to raise its special defense as well. But after a couple uh, max steel spikes it was basically impossible to remove with a physical attack unless it was maybe a fire type attack and so lots of players use ferrothorn both offensively and defensively by using the assault vest item anyway ferrothorn was never a pokemon that was hitting like crazy high usage stats or something like it never had anything similar to whimsicott or, or venusaur or anything but the thing is that it's always been a consistent pick like there's never really been a format where ferrothorn is like Oh, Ferrothorn's super bad. Like, I can't use it at all here. Unlike a lot of other Pokemon on this list. But even though it doesn't have, like, the most usage, it's always a Pokemon that seems to be whittling its way into the top of tournaments and winning tournaments uh, a decent bit of the time. And so I feel like it's a Pokemon that, like, is kind of difficult to use. But when it's used well, it can have really high peaks. And I think it's absolutely one of the best grass type Pokemon of all time. Okay, the last one before we talk about the top three is a Pokemon that I was really kind of unsure where to put. It's the newest Pokemon on the list. And it's the only Pokemon on here that has never uh, played in a world championship at the time that I'm making this video. It's Ogre Pond. And I guess that means that it's technically four different Pokemon. But I'm going to treat them all as one, even though they play kind of differently because it's just the item that changes. And the whole thing is actually really confusing because like I I wanted to put it in top three but then I was like well I can't really put it in the top three because like it hasn't even played in the world yet and we've really only had really one format kind of two but it's kind of one at the same time with it so anyway I really wasn't sure what to do with Ogre Pond so I'm putting it on the base list and I didn't put it in the honorable mentions even though I put Ogre Pond water in the honorable mentions in the water type video because well like for the same reason but there's four more Ogre Ponds here anyway let's just talk about Ogre Pond because the whole thing's kind of a mess Ogre Pond is one Pokemon that's technically four Pokemon depending on the type of mask that it wears which changes its secondary typing but it's always a grass type we can talk about all four of them here at the moment it seems that the tier list is kind of water then fire then grass then rock but there's use for all of them so it's not like I would say that any one of them is bad even the rock one which is the least play also like has some usage and, and has a niche so Ogre Pond is really confusing because the way that it functions changes like really entirely based on the mask uh the base abilities change the Terra ability raises a different stat depending on which mask it has on and its signature move Ivy Cudgel changes type as well at the moment Ogre Pond is incredibly strong it's actually become the number one most used Pokemon in certain tournaments on the second day of competition reaching upwards of over 66 percent just for the water type one which is well really absurd because there, there are four different ones so you figure that's even higher when you factor in all the Ogre Ponds it's just a Pokemon that kind of has everything it has really good stats it's naturally like tanky enough like it's not so frail but it also is really fast and hits really hard its typings are really useful grass and fire is not unique anymore because they made Scoville but rare grass and water for a while was just Ludicolo so that's also 
a pretty rare typing uh its signature move is completely ridiculous it's a super strong move with no drawback that has a heightened crit chance which is again absurd if it's wearing one of the masks and not the teal mask uh, all of its moves just get a flat 20 percent damage increase which okay like I guess I guess that's all right yeah sure thanks game freak also its move pool is ridiculous not only does it get spiky shield which is just an upgraded version of protect it also gets follow me which is a move that they're typically very hesitant to give to any Pokemon that's even remotely good for a while Clefairy was the best follow me user or one of the best follow me users at least which should tell you something about how how good the normal follow me users are and so the fact that we have a Pokemon that is this good just naturally and also has follow me it's very 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 messed up Ogrebond doesn't normally run a lot of coverage moves but it gets a fair few the grass type one will occasionally run moves like stomping tantrum superpower or knockoff the fire type one hits incredibly hard the water type one is really tanky and is a great answer urshifu but yeah basically it's a really strong Pokemon and the flexibility makes it just like really really threatening and it can kind of do it all right like Ogrebond water is the main set right now but I want a regional with swords dance Ogrebond fire even though follow me is the dominant set it has a bunch of useful grass type moves it has wood hammer it has horn leech it has power whip which has seen some play it has a grassy glide which I personally like if you pair it with Rillaboom the only reason I haven't put it higher up on the list is because it just hasn't been around for long enough and even though it is completely dominating play right now and I do think that it has longevity sometimes Pokemon uh, especially Pokemon that interact with the generation specific like mechanic with your generational gimmick I guess you could say uh sometimes they'll just completely fall off in the following years and since a lot of Ogre Pond strength is the fact that it gets a different ability when it terras and the fact that terrestrialization boosts its damage output and sometimes its defenses as well depending I just don't feel comfortable putting it in the top three because we just need to see more of it like before I can I can say that but what I will say is that I wouldn't be surprised if after like a couple more years especially if it if it continues being as good in the next Pokemon games assuming it's even in those I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this be one of the best grass type Pokemon of all time okay before we jump into the best three grass type Pokemon of all time let's talk about some honorable mentions Jumpluck this is a Pokemon that is kind of similar to like Whimsicott mixed with Venusaur in that it doesn't have the prankster ability but it does have chlorophyll doubling its speed in the sun and it's naturally very fast and it has both tailwind and sleep powder this is a Pokemon that's also also seen some play in restricted formats uh it was paired with Groudon before it helps out of the sun use tailwind use sleep powder to disrupt it also gets rage powder which neither Venusaur or Whimsicott get which is the grass type redirecting move which is really strong I should say the grass type redirecting move unless you're Ogre Pond in which case you get follow me despite rage powder would have been totally fine there in my opinion just from a balancing perspective it would have been fine to give Ogre Pond rage powder and not follow me because other grass type Pokemon can ignore rage powder but they can't ignore follow me and so uh yeah there would have been some nice counterplay built in but instead of one counterplay to follow me you have to use I guess Arcaladon or Duraludon and that's kind of your only option because the only tool you gave us Game Freak so thanks a bunch for that anyway we're talking a jump fluff here uh yeah I don't really have that much to say about it it was a tailwind it was a sleep powder it was rage powder user it was really used to support primarily Groudon it could also be used with Torkoal in certain situations it was a Pokemon that it definitely doesn't belong on our in our you know primary list or our top three list but it is a Pokemon that saw a lot of success over the years and has been kind of a niche pick that has had some play and, and a decent bit of success so I wanted to mention it Gorgeist uh Gorgeist actually is a Pokemon that has a decent amount of success I got second at an international at one at least one regional back in X and Y uh this is kind of like your quintessential bulky ghost type Pokemon it was often used with like Leech Seed and Willowist to kind of yeah just be disruptive and, and kind of function as like a I would say a worse version of Ferrothorn where you're trying to get it to the end game and have it be in a position where the opponent just like can't hit it with anything which is nice it's a cool Pokemon it's also just like Ogre Pond it technically is a Pokemon that has I think it's four different forms it might even be five based on the size and the stats change depending on the form but that's not really relevant I just think it's kind of funny a bonus snow uh, a bonus snow is a Pokemon that like doesn't really feel like a grass type so much as an ice type because it sets up the hail I guess now the snow and it has seen enough usage over the years and in specific formats it's actually been pretty decent it's been a while since a bonus snow has felt uh good I think back in 2010 it was actually really good it looks like it won three different national championships based on my research and then throughout black and white as well it was actually like a pretty decent Pokemon but since then it's definitely felt pretty niche the thing is with hail changing to snow a bonus snow was actually pretty decent during a lot of the last year or Scarlet and Violet's first competitive year for most of it a bonus snow was actually like a decently niche pick and it didn't see a ton of success Success, but it also wasn't like horrible by any means so I think especially because it was so good back in 2010 uh during that rule set and it was also okay during black and white it got second at, at nationals in 2013 I wanted to include it here but yeah like I'm hopeful that the change from hail to snow will make it better it I think it definitely made it better but hopefully in a future format where the power level is lower it can actually see some decent play Lilligant okay I, I don't know what is up with the grass types but this is also a Pokemon with two different forms Hisuian Lilligant and regular Lilligant this is an alternative chlorophyll sweeper where it's a little bit less threatening than a Pokemon like Venusaur in terms of the damage output but what it gains instead is the move after you which is a very powerful attack which lets the partner move immediately after the user so by basically using the super fast chlorophyll Pokemon and pairing it with the Pokemon like Torkoal you can use eruption 
oftentimes before the opponent's able to attack and that is very very dangerous as is sleep powder as is the powerful grass or fighting type moves of its Hisuian form like it's a couple other interesting moves as well uh, and it actually is a really good user of terrestrialization because with terra ghost you can become immune to fake out which is really really valuable and very threatening for opponents so it's definitely not a pokemon that's like you know super super broken or anything but it has a niche and it's had a lot of success over the years mostly paired with torkoal actually especially in uh, formats where the power level is lower okay our last one we'll mention is a pokemon that was a favorite of mine for a while but i don't really like it anymore but i'm putting it on the list anyway because i am hashtag unbiased uh it's tapu bulu tapu bulu is one of the most forgotten and saddest pokemon of all time it's the fourth tapu it was always the worst of all the tapus um and initially i didn't even have it on this list but my friends convinced me that it probably belonged here because during sun and moon's era it was actually pretty good like um era, i wouldn't say it was good okay i used it a lot and it didn't feel very good a lot of the time it almost never felt good oh yeah i did win a regional with it i guess but uh i wouldn't read too much into that anyway it was kind of useful because it was this anti-tapu pokemon where the other tapu were more popular so by using tapu bulu you could overwrite their terrain and you were often the one who like could get the terrain it was also like a decent um defensive tool against them and you know horn leech was actually really good against a bunch of them or wood hammer can KO the frailer ones uh, it's an interesting pokemon for sure grass and fairy is like interesting typing but it never really got to make use of it because it doesn't get any fairy moves like at all i think it gets like dazzling gleam and it's a physical attacker but yeah tapu bulu basically is uh, it's a pokemon that will almost never see play again because it's been completely outclassed by Rillaboom. Oh Rillaboom also sits the grassy terrain with the same ability but it gets moves like fake out and uh grassy glide which for whatever reason Tapu Bulu doesn't get so Tapu Bulu it, it had a fair bit of play during the Sun and Moon era but now that Rillaboom's around there's basically no reason to ever use it in my opinion so sorry Tapu Bulu see you never bye bye oh also uh it's not one of the best grass type Pokemon of all time and it definitely doesn't deserve to be even on the honorable mentions list but it's my favorite Pokemon so I'm going to mention it here Executor. I used it to get second place to the World Championships in 2012, uh, and other than that, it really hasn't seen very much success, though it does pop up occasionally. Okay, now it's time for our top three best grass type Pokemon of all time, and in my opinion, these three stand clearly above the rest, both in their history and their strength, and in the fact that they've really never been bad. These Pokemon have always been good, always been a menace, and have often been Pokemon that were dominating not just, you know, the grass types of the format, but the entire format themselves. Let's start with number three, Kartana. Ever since Kartana was introduced, it has been a complete menace. What you have to know about Kartana is that it's fast, uh, it hits very hard, and it has a very, very low, dare I say, paper thin special defense stat. This is an original joke. Haha, <laughs> I'm so funny and creative. Anyway, Kartana is a grass and steel type just like Ferrothorn, but whereas Ferrothorn is a slow and tanky Pokemon that aims to use the type defensively, Kartana aims to use it offensively. It was a great user of Z-moves because it's so fast and so strong that it's able to just output a ton of damage. And the really scary thing is that if it ever gets a KO, its Beast Boost activates giving it an attack boost, making it even stronger. Kartana also gets some interesting moves that are not grass or steel type moves. Uh, most notably is Sacred Sword, which is a really nice move on a Pokemon who can't touch other steel type Pokemon with its stab attacks. It also gets Tailwind and some players use like Focus Energy and some other some other sets as well. Subzu was actually used a fair bit on Kartana because it's so fast and frail that you really want to protect in front of it uh, because otherwise it'll just knock you out. And if you do that and it gets a substitute up, it can be very dangerous. Despite being so frail, Kartana actually has seen um, a lot of play as a tanky Pokemon, either with the Assault Vest item, which buffs its special defense a ton. And if you invest your staff points wisely, you can survive some really surprising attacks. Actually, similarly to Ferrothorn, making use of the type's defensive benefits in addition to its offensive ones. And also as a Dynamax Pokemon, doubling the HP pool allowed Cortana to actually be really, really tanky. And especially with Dynamax, Cortana would often run Aerial Ace for max airstream to boost its team's speed stats. Cortana has only been around since Sun and Moon, but since then it has won so many events, including the World Championships back in 2018. Cortana is actually similar to Ferrothorn in not just the typing, but also the fact that it works both in and out of restricted formats because of its grass typing, again, matching up really well into Groudon and Kyogre. Uh, that ends up being a really big deal with grass types, as it turns out. I, I know that you know going into this video i don't think i quite realized how good grass types are in restricted formats but yeah it's a definitely something that i've noticed but yeah Kartana's really good against a lot of the restricted pokemon like again Proudhon and kyogre and so it's seen a lot of play in restricted formats but it also has such good stats that it works in outside of restricted formats as well so it's just a really consistent pokemon it's won so many regionals it's won the world championship it's gotten close to winning the world championships even in the times when it didn't win it's an incredible pokemon and it's a pokemon that made really good use of both z moves and dynamax which were the two main mechanics in the games that it was in it's not currently in scarlet and violet and personally i'm okay with that Cartona does have a number of weaknesses i mean most notably and most obviously the fire type uh being quadruple weak to fire is very very bad and has helped to kind of keep it in check uh, for a while it also is another reason why it pairs super well with kyogre 
helping to dampen that fire weakness a little bit but also it's so frail on the special side and though you can get around that with items like focus ash or assault vest it's still something to be aware of uh, and it is it is always going to be a weakness because no matter how much you buff it up you can only change that starting stat value so much that being said cortana is still absolutely one of the best grass type pokemon of all time but that obvious weakness i would say is not super present in our number two slot rillaboom now rillaboom has been around for less time than cortana and in fact it has only been legal for two world championships compared to cortana's i don't actually know 17 18 19 22 four world championships i don't know and on top of that rillaboom took a little bit to get going when it was first released it didn't have access to its hidden ability grassy surge which is definitely essential in making it a viable pokemon so what makes rillaboom so good number one it has really good stats it's very tanky especially if you give it an assault vest but it also hits really really hard on top of that it's that kind of a nice speed stat for one of its moves which we'll talk about a little bit later where it's like not very fast but it's also not so slow it's like slower end of middle which actually ends up being really useful another thing that we should talk about are its moves number one it gets fake out which is a super valuable priority move that is used to stop opponents from attacking for a single turn and is really great just as a supporting move to help your team kind of reposition and stay alive fake out's not the only thing it can do though it has wood hammer which with grassy surge and grassy terrain boosting its damage output hits ridiculously hard people have run um miracle seed on this thing to do even more damage and if you don't resist wood hammer even if it doesn't have a boosting item you're going to take a ton of damage again the extra boom was also an option that you could use to hit even harder because it had a special max move that did even more damage but most of the time Rillaboom was just strong enough in its base form on top of that Rillaboom was eventually given grassy glide which is a priority move that only has priority in grassy terrain given how strong Rillaboom already is uh this move is very dangerous because priority moves aren't really meant to be doing a ton of damage but on Rillaboom, they, they certainly can hit pretty hard. Grass moves and supporting moves aren't the only things that it has, though. It also has knockoff to remove items, which is really, really useful. It has high horsepower. It hits steel and fire and poison type Pokemon who resist its grass type attacks. And it also has U-turn, which is very, very valuable, which allows it to tank a hit and then switch out, bringing in another Pokemon in safely without taking a ton of damage. With its great move pool, great stats, and really valuable ability, uh, it's kind of hard for Rillaboom to not feel like super useful on a team. You can use the terrain to heal your team up and cut Earthquake's power in half. Fake Out is always useful in every matchup, and it hits so hard that unless the opponent has like a full team of resists, and even then, it's just going to be doing so much damage. When Rillaboom was first given grassy terrain, uh, it was right before the first Player's Cup, and it uh, won the first Player's Cup, and then uh, I won the second Player's Cup with it as well in 2022 when events returned it won multiple regional championships and then went on to win the world championships as well Rillaboom also almost won the following year's world championships in 2023 placing second uh despite not being legal for the entire year except for the worlds itself so players didn't have time to like optimize or or practice with it or anything in that format this year Rillaboom continues to prove that it's one of the best Pokemon in the format uh I myself recently won a regional with it in Charlotte which is the biggest official Pokemon tournament of all time video incoming actually at this point the video is probably already out watch that video <laughs> but yeah Rillaboom is a really really strong Pokemon it has a ton it can do it's always useful it's super tanky it it's really hard it has a priority attack it has a ton of utility it has a great ability there's so much going for it but not as much as the number one Pokemon on our list. There's been a Pokemon that's been suspiciously absent from our list. And if you've made it this far, you can probably guess what it is. It's one of the most iconic and prolific grass type Pokemon of all time. It's always useful. It is always a huge pain to play against. It's Amoongus. I think Amoongus is one of the most memorable grass type Pokemon of all time, in part because it is so annoying to lose to. Amoongus is by far the best Spore user in the game, with Spore being the only 100% accurate move that puts a Pokemon to sleep, and sleep being one of the most debilitating status conditions in the entire game. As if that weren't bad enough, Amoongus's regenerator ability allows it to heal health every time it's switched out, and given that it's already naturally so tanky, this is just even more annoying and makes it so hard to get off the field. It can also support its team with Rage Powder to keep attacks away from more valuable offensive Pokemon, and it can even heal its partners with Pollen Puff, a move that not only heals 50% to a partner if you hit it, but also does damage to an enemy if you hit it with that instead. Amoongus has literally been good since I started playing competitive Pokemon in 2011. In fact, it was one of the key Pokemon that my team lost to way back in my first year in 2011, and eventually led to me using Pokemon like Embor to try and get a leg up on it. There has never been a Pokemon that has won the world championships more than Amoongus. It's tied with three wins with some of the other all-time greats. Most recently, it was actually the grass type that beat Rillaboom in the finals of the 2023 world championship. I gotta say, there are very few Pokemon that were good in 2011 in my first season that are still good today. And the fact that Amoongus has managed to keep up for this long with really not that many major buffs it's just pollen puff everything else that's kind of had the whole time 
is really, really impressive. Amoongus is a Pokemon that when it's in the format, you have to give it so much respect or else you risk having your entire team being put to sleep and just taken out of commission. On my Charlotte team, I actually had three Pokemon naturally immune to Amoongus with a fourth that could tear it a grass just because I wanted to respect the mushroom as much as possible. What's funny about Amoongus is that despite there being a couple like kind of clear counters uh, like safety goggles or grass type Pokemon or or taunt it just always feels like it's contributing to battles even when opponents are specifically preparing for it it's also cool because it has a bunch of different items it can use uh, i won a regional last year with mental herb Amoongus, but citrus berry has been more popular rocky helmet's great in formats with like mega kangaskhan or urshifu or other powerful multi-hitting attacks and that's not even mentioning items like akaberry or kobaberry which have seen some use over time funnily enough uh, Amoongus is actually one of the main reasons actually probably the main reason that grass type Pokemon received a major buff going into X and Y where they became immune to powder moves because uh with Amoongus's introduction the generation prior Amoongus is just putting other Amoongus to sleep and it was so difficult to stop it's actually one of the only examples of a Pokemon intentionally being run below level 50 where people would run level 49 Amoongus specifically so that in trick room they would be slower than other amoongus i guess faster than other amoongus so that they could use spore first it was this really really crazy strategy that year people were running like lumberry amoongus they were running chestoberry amoongus anyway despite amoongus being really annoying to play against it's probably one of the reasons why grass types are so good right now because it basically forced the game to change just to compensate for it and even that major change even the addition of safety goggles grass types being immune to spore terra grass nowadays the ability overcoat being being introduced none of these were enough to stop Amoongus it's still one of the best Pokemon and I think it will probably be one of the best Pokemon until they make like Mega Amoongus oh I guess they made Brute Bonnet yeah that didn't even stop it while there are a lot of great grass type Pokemon in my opinion it's Amoongus that's the best anyway I've now talked about the best fire types and the best water types and now the best grass types so the next type that I talk about is up in the air let me know what you thought about this video by the way I tried to be uh, a bit more of my old style a little bit more informal a little bit more conversational um if you liked it or if you didn't like it I'd love to hear the feedback I do try to read every comment so um yeah let me know what type you want me to talk about next let me know what you thought about this video and uh yeah thank you for watching i really appreciate it amoongus time for sleep bye bye